If there never were rain, how would we ever know the joy of the sun? Ta-da! All right, now. Okay, um, so this next person I'm bringing up to the, the space, the speakeasy, I, I, I don't get paid to do this. Um, I do this because, because I believe in artists, I believe in process, and um, along the way, I've, I've been in this industry of art and stuff forever, but we've met some really amazing people, and one of those people is someone I invited today. His name is Paul Maybon. I'm gonna let him share a little bit with you. Yeah, you can clap, come on. Yeah, you can clap for Paul Maybon. Paul Maybon, that's you, you know? that's you. Do a piece for us, do a piece for us. And then we'll talk, do a piece. Son of a theater player, posted front row. Othello to Robeson seamless, though it seems his genius lies in me. I know it hides in dreams of stages, followed by numbers where he failed to go. So if it must go on, then I show love through pen, though not heavy. I write levity to mend this life of lies and broken promises. That's why my comedy and drama gets confusing sometimes. Rehab visits, AA meetings, at 15. It was normal for me to be proud of his clean. Off stage in between, my mother and grandmother posted front row, a loud gunshot pop, and a five-year-old said, stop the play! I made my first audience laugh and cry that day. Blood covered his shirt, and tears did mine. He came behind me and picked me up, and he said he was fine. My friend Andrew said as long as he's alive, there's still time, right? To heal the real wounds. Before the end soon fills me with regret, I want so much more than a curtain call to let me know that the show goes on. Because I still feel the confusion of a five when I audition. It's a part of me, man, it's missing. But I know it hides in dreams of stages, followed by numbers, where he failed to go. called Conversations with Lady Bosco and we just Yo, you just cried right now. You just oh, cried. That was that was fake. That was fake? What did you put some salt in there or you, you, what? You turned your head. What happened? What happened there? You turned your head and I got some salt and I was like <laughs> No, what happened was um <laughs> Talk to us about that. Talk about vulnerability for a um, minute. For vulnerability. Me. Okay. vulnerability. For a man, well, too, because you know, that's... It's, 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 you know, it's, we all are vulnerable, you know, but, you know, as an actor, we train ourselves to, to not worry about people seeing our vulnerability. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, my father's an actor, you know, and he had his struggles, and, um, and I had a hard time writing about that, you know, because it's always from a theatrical standpoint. Everything's always about a show. And that's kind of how we related. Even though it wasn't in my life, it was just whenever we got together, the only thing we had in common was, you know, the art. And, um, you know, it took a while for me to, to deal with, you know, what really happened in my upbringing. So I get reminded of it because A, we have the same name, and B, Whenever somebody YouTubes my name, he pops up, you know, and I'm sure he has to explain who I am and, you know, the reverse of that. So it's, it's something that I'm still dealing with because, you know, like I said, I'm auditioning now and it's like, you know, you have this dream of making it, but until you've made it, you don't know what it feels like. And since my father didn't make it, it's kind of like, well, what are we missing? 
You know what I mean? Am I crazy? Do you want to know <laughs> I just freaking cried, right? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so you grew up, so you grew up somewhat in- I did this, grow up, yeah, yes. Yeah, you grew up in this there. industry. In this oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, grew up in the front row. My father was a theater actor and I grew up watching uh, him do Othello and, and, and Chicago, in Chicago theater. Steppenwolf, ETA, Congo Square. You know, it's, it's, it had a tremendous influence on me as a person, but also my poetic style. You know, I'm real dramatic. Right. So, yeah. No, I love it, because actually your poems, I, I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, it's poems, but it's kind of like monologues. It's kind of like monologues and he puts them in poetry, <laughs> in poetry form, yeah, which is long, awesome. As long as it's entertaining, that's all that matters. No, it's great. Um, talk to me about being a, um, in, really in poetry and comedy and and uh, and as an actor, talk to me about being um, an ethnic man, a person of color in this industry. Um, a person um, of color in this industry. Has, I have um, you. You know what? Hit, yes. It's so ahead. funny, man. You go to an audition. I was just that one a day, man, and it's just the most racially segregated. You think segregation is not alive? Go to an audition. <laughs> the whites come at one, the blacks come at two, the Asians at three, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on? They, they actually separate you from light-skinned blacks to dark-skinned blacks. And then, no, I'm serious, and then as soon as you leave the room with your, you know, racially ambiguous part, whatever, right? You close the door, and then they talk about you. I don't know, what do you think? Is he too dark? Should we go lighter? <laughs> Let's go lighter. Have him come in with you, yeah. And they send you back in like you don't know what's going on. And this, I mean, every commercial, everything you see has been carefully, carefully racially segregated and planned out. And, and we keep going back for some reason. Yeah. How we were in a commercial. Well, not we, but I was in a commercial with the Boscos. This, this, this. The Boscos. The Boscos. Yes. This. We were all in one, one commercial for um, Krylon Paint, and it was so cool to see everybody. It's airing right now. You guys might have seen it. That's right. Just uh, look for a black guy and a few Asian people. And we're <laughs> um, so... Paul Mabon is, uh, I've, I know him through a, a few different circuits. He, he was in the show, if you were here last month. Oh, by the way, you can see these videos on my YouTube, Lady Bosco. Okay, so last month we had um, Patrick O'Sullivan who created the show called All About Walkin'. He was in All About Walkin'. He also goes to DPL, which is my brother's spot across town on Tuesday nights. Um, and then now he pops up on these movie, uh, commercial shoots um, and I like to think of it as when you keep bumping into people, um, that you're in the right place. And, or and you make a baby. Then what? Or you make a baby. <laughs> or you make a baby? Oh, okay. I hope that wasn't, okay. Um, so that was awkward. Uh, that you have found your tribe. And I think that's what we're all out here doing. Uh, so can you talk to me about community and tribe and what that means to your craft and doing what you do? Like, is that an important part? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, you know, we all go through our phases of, uh, of community and tribe because we, I think you have to pass on, you have to pass on not just the knowledge, but you have to pass on the, 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 the space, you know, not pass it on, but just allow the young people to, to have their voice as well, you know what I mean? Because it's important to, to, to share, you know, it's, it's like, you don't do so much reading, you do a lot of hosting. You know, you provide opportunities for other people, you know? Because we all grew up together. We all went to open mics every freaking day of the week. And now we have kids and jobs and careers and we couldn't possibly think of doing that, you know? But the cycle continues and we keep, you know, making bigger and bigger shows and stages for other people to, to, to share their gifts. So it's, it's, it's created a community within a community. Which is what I like, because you know it's good to see you. We always talk about doing a spot together. We're gonna. No, do we're something. doing a spot together. We're, we're do doing it. a spot together. It's, we're saying yeah. it right now. We're saying it right now. But it's it's good to it's good to it's good to come together and see so many so many leaders come together and, and support each other's venues and 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 know that without saying that you know we're in this together, you know. Right. Yeah. Totally. And. Um, Asha. Asha. Uh, so lastly. Um, as your first poem reflected, like we all, everybody has hardships in their life, right? Everybody has, I used to have this collective called Tart and Feathered and it was based on the fact that everybody's been tart and feathered to a degree, but it's, um, 
you know, it's the champions that make it out of that because you can choose to be a victim, right? Or you can choose to overcome. What is that point for you? What you you can have a choice to I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that that point of weakness or strength. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it's well for me that first piece was cathartic. You can choose to be a victim because you know it's not about just getting up here and performing. For me, it's about figuring out what the hell is going on with you. You know. I mean, not just talking with, like I work with kids at this organization, yeah, you've been there, Get Lit, and we talk to teens and we go, throughout the school system, we help teens develop their poetry so they're not just standing on stage talking about what happened, but actually feeling like they're doing something about it, you know? Not just saying the words, but, you know, releasing, you know? You know what I mean? Because imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and there's a lot of different styles of poetry. But the kids are just learning that if they see somebody do something on TV or something, that that's what they think poetry is about. But in order to help themselves, they have to learn how to know who they are, you know? And I think that that piece that I did, you know, it helps me to learn who I am without being afraid to let everybody know that, you know, my dad was on drugs and I was at rehab centers, you know, going to see him. Those are some really powerful things that, you know, that hurt me when I was younger. But I can freely talk about it now, you know, without crying. Or crying. Uh, or crying. Or crying. You know, and, and feel better about it because not only do I know that other people may or may not relate to it, but, you know, it does something for me the next time I go out and audition to know that, okay, this is what it's about. You know, it's about me improving myself and not being afraid to. Yeah, it's, it's incredible when you write a piece or you share on a stage. Um, it is for you, but yeah. it's almost like, but once you hit the stage, it's almost not yours anymore. And whatever you say actually does affect someone else and does, even if they didn't have that same experience, Yeah, something happens, right? That's, that's right. That's the magic. That's right. That's the magic. That's the magic. That's the magic. Okay, you got another piece for us? Just this one time. You got this, you got another piece for us? And then we're gonna one go more. on. And then we're gonna go All on. Right. All right, get it in. Thank you Paul, for being here. Every first Monday, you go ahead, girl. Break a leg. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite food? Oh. Uh, okay, what's your favorite food? food? Steak. What's your favorite food? Mexican food. Try it again. Favorite food? Mediterranean. Mediterranean? Lady Bosco, favorite food? Uh, to adobo. 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 Don't sleep on it. Okay. All right. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza. What kind of pizza, man? Uh, you got to be specific. <laughs> Can't just say pizza. Hawaiian pizza. Yeah. Hawaiian pizza. You just say that pizza. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite food used to be double waffle with cheese. <laughs> I get bacon, mayo, no pickle, and I would even say please. But on January 15th. My politeness went to hell. That's when I bought my first chili. This part of my Taco Bell. Because Burger King is a sissy. <laughs> Taco Bell is super duper. To clarify what that means, I will now define chili. You got three different kinds of meat. I'm talking steak, chicken, beef. I can taste it with my eyes. I can smell it with my teeth. Santa Fe Baja or Supreme. <laughs> Don't forget the sour cream. Strong enough to keep you click them and I want everything. <laughs> I don't care what it costs. Hey, hey, let us cheese fiesta sauce. Fiesta sauce, it's got the fizz. I don't even know what that is, but it's good. With sauce is mild, if you don't like mild, it's hot fire. And if you still don't like Chalupa Charles, you're a liar, because you're a liar. <laughs> it don't matter when, where, or how, today, tonight. Let's go right now. Come on. <laughs> the, things, the things taste so damn good, I would buy one in the hood. <laughs> and if it's dark and there's no sun, the drive is open until one. <laughs> I know everything about them. Don't know what I do without that crispy, flaky, sour. Go, man, get your car, say, let's go. <laughs> Ask me where I'm going. Where you going? Taco Bell! <laughs> what you listening? What the hell? <laughs> what that seafood place off the rails? No, I don't want to lock the tails. We're going to get us some chalupas, lunch, dinner, food, supper. Give me the keys, I'll drop. You know, you was an eight this month. I mean, hello? <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm making a run for the border. Okay, welcome to Taco Bell, sir. Mike, please take your... Oh, hell yeah! 
Right now, you let your loop for combo. <laughs> Would you like to try? I don't know. How about I? No. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no, I ain't through. Don't forget my mom do. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry if I'm rude, but I'm tired of talking to you. You have one chalupa combo. I ain't got time for all that mess. The total is 562. Is that also? Yes! Oh, damn. <laughs> I never failed every single fucking time. Whenever I needed Chalupa, I'm holding up the line. I can't believe this. Would you come on? So big nose. Well, how many bags you gonna get? Would you order 15 tacos? <laughs> Chicken gordita supreme. What the fuck is this? I ain't got an alma que ore. Yes, yo estoy mucho pin. Not funny. Yeah, keep the change. Cause I got my most favorite food thing. If I was to die right now, right now, and heaven had the Burger King, but there was a Taco Bell in hell. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus said, come on, let's go. But if the devil had chalupas, Jesus Christ, I don't know. <laughs> because my favorite for no, no, listen. My favorite food, it's not funny on the real series. My favorite food, it used to be the double opera with cheese, right? Come on, help me, bacon, mayo, pickle, no pickle! And I used to say, please, but because of these chalupas, I almost went to hell. <laughs> but before I go to heaven, where am I going? Taking us to Taco Bell. Unbelievable. Woo, that's special. Thank you, Paul.